the past, I've looked at some pretty out there audiophile accessories that promise to improve the sound quality of your CDs, assuming that either A, that was possible, and B, it was necessary. There was the CD shaver that cut a beveled edge onto a compact disc in an attempt to minimise light scatter. And then there was the CD demagnetizer that, you guessed it, attempted to demagnetize CDs. A CD is made up of plastic and aluminium in a sandwich, a structure that's almost entirely non-susceptible to magnetism. Now, you might be able to detect a hint of scepticism, and that's because I'm capable of using logic and reasoning, but even when I try to scientifically test these things as best as I'm able, Using my test, there wasn't one bit, literally, of difference to the digital information that was contained on the CDs before and after the treatment. But you might have seen recently there's been some reports of YouTube reviewers being threatened by manufacturers with legal action whenever they've given a negative review of their product. So let's try and avoid any of that hassle here. Look, I'm a man who's getting on a bit in years. I've got hearing of a man of my age. Perhaps the people who post reviews of these things and give them five stars online, maybe they're a lot younger than I am. Maybe their hearing hasn't fall prey to the ravages of time, or perhaps their free review samples worked better than the used old ones that I bought with my own money. But today I want to look at another device that was sold to audiophiles wanting to improve the sound quality of their compact discs. The idea of improving the sound quality of a CD to me seems silly because a CD already produces all the sound that I'm capable of hearing. Yes, you can get badly mastered CDs, brick wall ones, but it's not going to improve any of that stuff. We're talking about a CD that's been properly mastered that sounds excellent to start with, and then this is supposed to improve on that. Well, to me, that's like adding water into an already full cup. It's just going to be lost on me. I'm sure you'll be able to form an opinion on this as we go along, but I'm not going to force my opinion on you. Right, enough talk. Let's take a look at it. It's this thing here. Right, so this is the Rio 5-2. Wouldn't that then be Rio 6? Well, never mind. Rio 5-2 from Acoustic Revive. We've got a hologram on here to prove that it is the genuine article made in Japan. See, it's a little bit beat up because I've bought a used example off eBay. Hopefully it's a working example. So we'll just get it out of here. Okay, so here's what was inside the box. We have a plastic cylinder and a single piece of A4 with instructions printed on one side. Let me explain how this thing works. So inside this plastic cylinder, we have a halogen bulb. There's also a fan and then on the top, we've got this grate, and you'll see underneath there, there are a series of small balls, which are made up of a number of materials, but I believe the most important one amongst them is something called tourmaline or tourmaline. Now, tourmaline, apparently, if you shine a halogen bulb at it, will emit negative ions. The fan is in here to aid those ions being shot out of the top of this, and of course, on the top of here, that's where you place your CD. You're supposed to put it one side up to start with and then the other side up for the second treatment. Now those treatments are activated by pressing this red button on the back. So you plug it in, you turn it on, you press the button, that activates the fan. That will run for about 13 seconds. After that, you then flip it over, do the same for the other side. And that's it, that's all you have to do. And then your CD will have been treated by having negative ions fired at it. Now, in the instructions, it says I have to run it for 10 minutes before I do the first disc. So we'll make sure we follow the instructions to the letter. So I've plugged it in now. Let's just switch it on. Let's hope light comes out the top. Yeah, there we go. I've noticed the fan is also activated initially, but I think that should auto shut down any second now. I can hear it running inside. Unfortunately, there's other fans in this room going on, so you won't be able to hear it. But yeah, there, it's just turned itself off now. I noticed the switch was also illuminated while the fan was on. So that's it. So I'm going to leave this now for 10 minutes. Right, we rejoined this about 15 minutes later. I've given it plenty of time to warm up. The reason I was taking so long, I wanted to listen to the CD on the hi-fi, listen to it before I treated it, so then I can compare that again 
after it's been shot with negative ions. Now, the tracks I was listening to off this sampler were tracks one and six. I'm gonna use those same two tracks again to test it later. And I did notice it mentioned in the instructions not to touch this mesh on the top because it gets hot. So let's find out. Whenever something says don't touch, you have to touch it. Yeah, that is hot actually. You won't want to keep your finger on that for more than a few seconds. And as a result, there are some warnings about that on here, other than not touching it. There's one that says remove the disc immediately after both sides have been treated because they don't want it to warp. And they say if you leave anything on the top and if fire breaks out, we at Acoustic Revive will not take any responsibility at all. Right, okay, well, it's warmed up. Let's put our CD on here, label side down first of all. Now, you'll notice the mesh is just below the CD, so it's not actually touching it. It's just resting slightly above, but we don't want to leave it on there too long, so let's switch it on. So that's the button on the back. Now, you can see the button is lit up while it's activated and it's just gone out, so let's do the other side. So, quick flip, press the button again. Keep my eye on that for the red light to go out. Any second now, it will extinguish. There we go. And let's take that off the top to avoid it warping. Right, so that is our treated CD. It's been blasted with negative ions to make it sound better. Okay, well, let's see for ourselves. Now, of course, it's been a few minutes since I last heard this, but I've tried to keep in my mind what it sounded like so that then I could do a comparison. So let's have another listen and see what I think. The instruments were clearer, airier, sweeter, more dynamic and just plain superior to the Naked CD. There was a softer, more elegant sound, a sense of analogue was definitely more apparent, I heard significantly more air and a much larger soundstage. It was a solid improvement. I should point out, those aren't my words, I read them from an online review of this device. For me, it sounded perfectly fine before treatment and after. In fact, I couldn't tell any difference between the two, but of course, then again, I've never had a great experience with negative irons. You're old, bald, fat and sweaty, and your videos are rubbish. Now, purely for the sake of completeness, I went through the process again with a different regular CD as well as a hybrid SACD. And of course, to my ears, they sounded the same before and after the treatment. But then again, they would, wouldn't they? I mean, it's the same CD being played on the same CD player. Those CDs contain the same digital data before and after I've lit them up with a halogen bulb. Intriguingly, you don't just have to use this for treating your discs. You can just place it in a room and it will improve your room's acoustics. At least according to Acoustic Revive it will. Here's what they say about that. Place the Rio 52 in your listing room. Once you switch it on, the natural negative ion is released by the halogen lamps, ray and heat. This ion will purify the air in the room. The result is sound waves travel the room well and sound improve remarkably. Then again, they were referring to a listing room. So perhaps this feature only works on ships. In fact, if you look at the instructions, you can see we've got the two different modes of operation split out here. The second one, how to treat discs, is the one that involves pressing the red button, the fan coming on, blowing the air up through the top. The other one is just how to generate negative iron. Doesn't involve pressing the button, it just means that you leave the thing switched on with the halogen light pointing up at the top. Now, all the reviews I've read of this say that it works best when used in conjunction with the CD demagnetizer that I showed previously. And by pure coincidence, those products are both made by the same company. But just like with that CD demagnetizer, I feel like I'm missing out on the because with these items. What I mean by that is I feel like there should be an explanation as to why they work. The CD demagnetizer demagnetizes your CDs. And the reason they sound better after doing that is because same with this thing. It fires negative ions at your CDs and therefore your CDs will sound better because not getting that in any of the reviews that I've read. They're all, I use this device, it sounded better. No explanation. In fact, I've got a bit of a review here. I just want to read what one of them said was the results of using this. There was a reduction in extraneous noise. The vocal had extra texture and emotion while the double bass firmed up, adding new weight while the reduction in noise enhanced the air and space in the sound stage, allowing more of the treble infused symbols to reach the ear. Now I've abridged that, but that review is online. And the reason all this happens though, is because, well, the closest I can get to that is this. 
The Acoustic Revive Rio 52 not only releases negative ions, it also emits infrared rays, which works as a surface active agent. This improves the transmission of the laser beam, which leads to improved sound quality and picture quality. Now, as far as I know, if the audio on a CD isn't cutting out and stuttering, then the laser is reading it accurately. But you might have noticed there, I mentioned picture, and that's because they also claim that this device can improve the image quality from your DVDs that have been treated by it. In fact, it says here on the picture, it provides depth and excellent color contrast. Oh, okay, that's cool, isn't it? Nice little additional benefit. Perhaps I should try it out on my 4K UHD Blu-rays. Maybe it'll make them look a little bit more 8K. Now, I do have a paragraph that describes how this device works. And this paragraph has been translated clearly from the original Japanese, not particularly well. And then it's been used on various adverts and articles. Now, to me, it reminds me of the Chewbacca defense from South Park. Tourmaline is widely known to contain electric current, 0.06 milliamps, as the human and other living bodies. There are reports that Tourmaline has the effect of improving water quality, the release of infrared rays, and other effects. One of the effects that we paid attention to is that Tourmaline releases negative ions, which are the same as those released naturally in the world. These natural negative ion size is 10,000 to 1 smaller compared to the negative ion produced electrically. Natural negative ion penetrates more easily into human body and other material compared with electrically made negative ion. None of this makes sense. It does not make sense. The defense rests. Of course, nowadays, there's a lot of people that aren't playing CDs anymore. They've written them all to their hard drives. I think it's probably not a good idea to try and use the demagnetizer on your hard drive, though. But if you are still buying CDs, then, yeah, there are still examples of this for sale online. As I say, around about a thousand euros or thereabouts if you really want to try and make your CDs somehow sound better than a CD. But of course this one was second hand and I paid a lot less than that for it. But I've got to feel sorry for the people that sold this because of course then they've had to go back to listening to the CDs untreated, unblasted by negative ions. It must have been such a big step back for them because the the effect doesn't last, it wears off. So you have to treat your CDs before you listen to them each time. In fact, I've seen one review say that treating them multiple times produced even better results. But if this device is too expensive for you, I've heard an alternative way to improve all the sound quality of every device you own. And it's a very simple thing that you can do. Now, keep this under your hat, but apparently, as soon as you become a patron to this channel, you immediately experience wider sound stage, improved bass, clearer trebles, better signal to noise ratio. Nobody really knows how that happens or if it even does happen. But you know what? Evidence, evidence. You might want to just try and give it a go. But anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.